enter my two tickets. And all sorts of other kinds of connected things. This is the my three. This is the my three example. Um, this is the canvas page. I can do whatever I want to in there. I've got total control over it. It's all handled by views. Um, and this is where the most of your application uh, logic goes. Um, there's there are drop down menus, tabs, all, all sorts of things that are controlled through HTML, um, which I'm going to talk about a little bit in a, in a second too. reason I rewrote um, the libraries, I didn't use the ones that Facebook distributes for PHP, um, a few reasons. First, um, it's monolithic. Well, it's, it's actually two classes and two different files, plus a configuration file that needs to go with it. Um, and it doesn't fit very well in the MVC. You could put it in uh, a vendor and use it like you would a vendor. The problem is that, it, again, it doesn't fit in the MVC. Um, some, some of the actions are security-based and should be uh, handled early in the controller logic. Some are um, handing information back to Facebook, uh, which, are, which are API calls and their methods. And some are getting information from, uh, and all of which can be done in, a, in their own version of a SQL called um, SBQL, uh, and that fits better in the uh, in a data source or at the model level layer. Um, the, the, the security, data queries in the API or the pushing information, like say putting information on the profile page, all get summed up really nicely with the data source, the data source and the component. Um, they also have multiple classes for PHP 4 and PHP 5, and they don't update them um, together. They, they put a lot more focus on PHP 5, uh, and whenever they add a new feature, whenever they make a change to the API, the PHP 5 gets up right away, the PHP 4 kind of lags a few days to even a couple of weeks behind. Uh, so I wrote it, and of course, um, to be as take like as possible to, to work in both PHP. Before and um, they, there's little to no presentation assistance in their libraries itself. They rely um, almost completely on uh, FBML, uh, which is great. It's, it's, it's a good idea. Uh, but the helper does is help kind of ease the writing of FBML, um, take away some of the redundancy. Okay, as far as security is concerned, um, again, I did this in, at the controller level. Um, when a user is logged in, or when a user has, has, has your ad, your app added, um, every request to your page comes with a, um, a post of information about the user, so that you, are, you know what the user's ID is, you know what his friends already are, you know, um, a couple pieces of information that comes with a hash key um, that matches the end and an API key. Um, when you create an application, you have you get an API key and a hash uh, a secret. Um, you then have to if you hash if you put all that information alphabetically in, a, in an array and hash it, you'll get you'll your secret match. The same happens again when you make a request. If you want to send something to the API, you put all your data in. If you hash it using MD5, um, and they'll, that way it tells them whether or not the, the request is legit. Um, the component does all that for you. I initially started 
this project thinking that, that the majority of my work would be from a data source. And it started with the data source first. Um, but the more, the more and more I, I worked on it, the more and more I built out, and the more that, that Facebook has made changes to its API, a lot more of the logic has moved into the component. Uh, and simply, the uh, queries um, from, from the, the uh, using a PQL have to come from the data source. Um, another thing about, about security is that uh, there are three different levels to somebody visiting your page. The user can just be, have come in through a Google search or, or not be related to it. You can decide what to do with that. They can, they can be, have your app installed on their Facebook, in which case you have that information. Um, or they could just be, they could be logged into, into Facebook but not, not have your app installed. So you have, the, you have the control over what you want to do. You can not allow them to come out. It's, that, that's up to you or, or very, I think the component will tell you what state you're at. Um, all goes up to the component. It's the only required piece. The reason is it's because it does all the security. Uh, by making it required, and it does all of the communication back to you, back to Facebook. Um, that can be from having to do redundant coding in the, in the data source. Um, and it, since, since almost everything you'd have to do required a component anyway, um, it was a good idea. Um, once you get more into FBML, which is the, the, the view logic, you'll see get less and less logic in the, in the data source. Uh, my application originally had one query to the database, um, to the FBQL, and now using, using features that Facebook has added has none. Um, so, the, so my data source logic becomes a lot less important. That's still so used for um, development, but basically you can preload queries now in Facebook. So um, I needed something to interpret that. I needed something to pre-populate the models rather than create, um, rather, rather than require the data source or have the data source make, make long, slow queries, 600 millisecond queries that aren't necessary for data you already have. Components of a lot of work now. Um, and like I said, there's, there's the profile, which is a separate thing. That changes when you ask it to. It's not, it's not dynamic. It, your, your canvas page is dynamic. The profile is, is whatever you tell it to. It stays that way until you tell it to change again. So a, a component um, action is called set profile. So whenever somebody makes a change, um, if they're playing with the canvas page, they make a, a change in information, you can update their profile. Um, and it happens, it happens instantly, um, and the, the component logic does that. Uh, publish action is the same for sending out um, emails or uh, or notifications. Um, so if you want to, if you want to communicate directly with the user, then the public action, uh, publish action does that. Again, those are those are things that only change when you tell it to, and so those actions run in the controller. Um, and there are other um, methods in the, in the sorry, component that handle references. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about references later. Um, and some um, other behind the scenes value, including before redirect. Before redirect is a, is a I don't know if you guys know it now in the components. Um, it's, a, it's a callback that happens if, you, if the control redirect is called. It checks each of the components to see if the component has a redirect. Um, and, and can add its own kind of magic in there. can interrupt the redirect and can do whatever it wants to. It's important for Facebook because um, your, your canvas page that you're most likely rendering in is an iframe uh, or a, a Ajax replacement. Uh, most often it's an iframe. So a, a traditional redirect doesn't work because the URL um, won't match up and then everything gets a little screwed. But, so what they have is they have a piece of HTML that is a, is a redirect, like, a, like an HTML tag. And that tells the client to, to refresh, the, refresh the frame and it, it makes her much cleaner. Uh, so before redirect, steals the redirect away from the controller and instead vendors that little tag to the URL. Um, so your methods can be more tick-like and, and, and uh, 
and that's based on package. Um, SDQL is a query language that the model uses. That's, that's how you can get information from the from the um, from Facebook about <coughs> users, friends, any kind of information that they have. If you look at their wiki, it is a pretty straightforward um, SQL-like, uh, pretty simplified version of SQL. Uh, there's ten or so, ten or so tables and mock tables. Um, I say mock tables because instead of giving you direct access to it, you can only query it other friends. But, uh, I, I've abstracted all of that into the traditional model um, type method um, when using when uh, when using that our application. <coughs> your data source, your model, can be just like it would be in any other. In the last part of that slide, you basically just set up your 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 associations as one, just like you would with any other model. And you can you can associate your Facebook um, fake tables to um, local database tables. So this FB user is the information from Facebook itself and it has a it has one relationship with my local profile. So my local profile only needs to store my Facebook user ID as a field. Um, just like it would if it was a if it was a profile for a, for a user table locally, um, and if I do a find against against either the local table, I'll get I, I will get uh, associated from a, a query generating associated information back from Facebook. If I do a Facebook query, I'll get associated information back from my local tables. Um, you have to be a lot more careful. Um, Expects is a good time to use here because the database, because it is a, an API call, it's significantly slower. So you want to minimize your minimize your calls back uh, as much as possible. But um, but the, the tools are there to make it to make it uh, very easy. Uh, FBML, as I mentioned earlier, is a subset of HTML with a few other uh, tags added. Um, this, I think, is the most powerful part of, of Facebook. What you'll see in the discussion groups and, and the wiki and forums in Facebook is people complaining, um, and they, they tend to make all their applications in iframe, which is an option. Uh, you can make your head just one giant iframe and then handle everything yourself, or you can you can leave it in, the, in its native form and use uh, FBML. Um, I think FBML is the way to go because you can save a lot of queries back to Facebook. Um, back using the data source, you can remove most of your queries by not requiring the information that you normally. So you're you're only given a user's ID. You're given his friend's ID. You don't know his friend's name. You don't know anything about their friends. You just know what their friend's user ID is. <coughs> by using profile pick UID, and I just throw in the, the ID which I already have about how to make it a query. I don't care anymore what, what the picture looks like. Um, Facebook will turn that into the picture using HTML. Same thing for name, and there's all sorts of parameters. Um, link will link it back to the profile. Use you means if it's, if, it's, if it's your profile you're looking at, or your your canvas page. But if the name is represented in the viewer, then it would use you instead of, instead of the person's name. Um, there's first name only. There's all sorts of, of nice features to that. You can make very complex pages without knowing anything about the user um, simply by using FBML and letting, letting the client uh, parse it and, and put the information in where, where you want it. And, um, there's also if loops. Um, um, I'm sorry. Um, that, there are there there is a case and there's a, there are a few. Um, Different types of ifs, if friend, if uh, in group, is an example. It is at user, so that 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 would only be visible. <laughs> um, the helper is very minimal because of that reason. Um, mostly, it takes care of things that don't normal that that deny you the the, the the conveniences of using the normal cake uh, helpers. Uh, two examples of those would be style 
uh, CSS and JavaScript can't um, load in CSS the way you normally can. You can't just put a URL. It has to be imported into the page. And the same thing for JavaScript. That's changed. They do do a caching of the JavaScript now. Um, but that is more actually more of an argument for using these um, the helper. Is that the, the, the you put this you put this style in and you call it just like you normally would. The helper goes into your CSS directory and does a file import. It does the same thing for script. Um, when I wrote this, you couldn't put script in, so so the helper went into the JavaScript folder, imported it right in where you made the call, and uh, it was transparent to you. You used it just like you would the JavaScript helper, but the FBML helper version. Um, now, now that they, they allow that, I've modified the script, and that'll go live this weekend. Um, so now it actually does it the traditional way. You don't have to change your view as Facebook changes. The, 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 uh, the project will change, and then your, your way of handling things will be more similar. Um, two things, two other convenient sections I added were pool and params. Um, those this past weekend. And those just help with some of the logic um, that you know, these Facebook tags are full of things like link equals false. It's not a it's not a Boolean false, it's a string false. Um, use your response. So I, I made some convenience methods just to make that a little bit cleaner. Um, I, I decided against actually making the tags um, and just instead have because they're they're relatively simple already. And instead, but you can you can have just create them do it in the helpers in case. Um, and two other ones are URL and link. Um, URL because um, um, Facebook is very picky about URLs. It doesn't handle parsing URLs because what it does is it takes your server name and it replaces it with their server name so that it's clear, so it's hidden from the from the client when you are already on graphing. And they do it consistently. It doesn't like things like um, colons used in these params unless you have the full URL. So I basically just put some convenience things in there to make sure that, that the URL is happy with them. Um, and you can create a URL just like you would using any other help to give you an array controller action. If you don't, then it will use the controller action. It's basically a, a wrapper with some added benefits around the HTML uh, URL link like tags. Um, I put some fluff in there. Um, Three things: autocomplete, editor, and rating. Um, because AJAX is a little bit difficult to do in Facebook, and those were things that I needed right away, and and, and things that we'll probably use in every application. Um, so there's a helper and a component part. The component parts may disappear um, because they don't do all that much, and they they, they kind of get away from the clean logic. But the uh, the helper methods will probably stay in there. Um, what they do is they are create the divs for an autocomplete, a edit in place, and a star rating system. Um, uh, and the, the, my three applications is all three of those. Uh, they also include some JavaScript that automatically gets downloaded. Right now, you have to put them in like you would any other JavaScript as part of your application. I'm going to move those to a shared location that the, now, now that I can pull JavaScript in um, so that you basically just put, you just call the helper and then it'll, it'll import it into your application from some central location. Um, and every time I update the JavaScript, I'll update the component and just get the next version transparently and we'll lock the gate here and nothing will change. Okay. I lost a little bit of my slide, but um, what I did want to talk to you about was the last thing is some more, some more advanced methods. Um, uh, a lot of it was, was covered earlier, and I've been, and it's just things that, that work really, really well. Uh, extensions. Uh, one of the reasons I called it helper FBML instead of Facebook when everything else is Facebook is because I'd like to, I'd like to use it to promote more. Getting, getting more Facebook apps, not as standalone apps. Um, most Facebook applications are don't exist outside of Facebook. It's something that we're going to 
most of them are junk. They don't really do much to eat from marshmallows that your friend who's in facility like that. Um, but with, with the extensions, you can make it really easy to, to use, um, to basically bring your existing apps, your existing cake apps in. By using the the um, router extension support, um, simply putting on a .fpml, we'll turn on we'll turn on uh, use views so that you can have fpml views versus html views, just just like they were shown earlier, <coughs> and the the, the transparent um, integration of your apps. The component um, realizes. If it doesn't get the information from Facebook, it's it's the um, as I showed earlier, there's the security measures in there. It basically just switches the component to disable to disabled instead of enabled. Um, and that's something you can test against. You can also test against whether the person is logged in or, or uh, has the app added, you can just test to see whether or not it's So if the if um, without without my uh, we have my clips on it too. I can't show you, but um, it's as simple as adding a couple lines of code and creating a second view. You can have your blog tutorial page or your baked articles show up in Facebook using um, FBML without adding any additional queries to the database. Um, adding them. I made a, I made quite a few changes over the past week. I'm sorry, I'm, I think I'm coming. Uh, coming off the minor pieces of the flu, so I didn't get a chance to upload it. But um, this weekend everything will be everything will be live. Um, and I'm, I'm planning on going with my original plan was to go to, to make it a 1.0 version um, this weekend. I learned some things yesterday and today that I'd like to integrate. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping to learn a little bit more. So so whether or not that makes this weekend is uh, is still questionable but with the um, with the Facebook uh, XML or whatever it is, uh, Facebook ML, whatever. Um, the, can you do with that like basically any custom? You know, can you build any custom elements, or you know, do you have to use an iframe to do? You know, can you pretty much do everything you need to do? With Facebook ML, or do you have to kind of mix and match, or inject stuff with JavaScript, or what? You know, they they have a limited. Um, I didn't I didn't mention it. Is, uh, there's FPJS, which is a, a limited set of JavaScript commands, um, mostly mostly JavaScript removed for security purposes. Sure. Um, I haven't found anything that that I can't do. But then again, I'm, I'm not that much of a of a JavaScript person to start. Uh, FBML itself um, can be annoying in, in, in that sometimes uh, you, you do need to, to repeat code, um, especially when using the ifs. Uh, you can't, everything has to be kind of nested in a, in a specific order. Um, one example is uh, if you if you intermix, let's see, there, there are pop-ups and dialogues and all sorts of things that you can do that are JavaScript-like um, and, and their own version of forms um, that are good. But if you were to say if it is app user, if it is user, which says if the person viewing the page ID matches the ID that I put in this tag, then show them this. Else, there's, there's an else, you can put an else in there. If you then try to use the menu tags, you can't put menus and then sub sub menus in with an if. The if has to wrap the entire menu and then the else has to wrap the entire duplicate of the menu. Um, there are things like that that are annoying that make the code duplication. As soon as I find that, I immediately write, and as soon as I find something that, that I think would be useful, I immediately write that in the helper. Um, so the helper version that I've been released this weekend has that very exactly. So you, add, you add tabs and then you can add as many different conditions as you want and it will regenerate the same menu five or six times or whatever you need um, without you having to use the um, And that's, that's really the only time that the helper is needed is, is if you find
find that you're you're doing things repeatedly or, or things are significantly longer than you need to be or are different than what you're used to doing with kids. So, but I think that being out um, is, is really good. The JavaScript in the mock Ajax is a little bit rougher, but that probably has more to do with my limited knowledge of JavaScript. I was able to make the, uh, I, I wrote the, the edit in place and the autocomplete and the, and the story, <coughs> considering I'm not an Ajax or a JavaScript programmer. Um, we were discussing a, a Facebook app in my business, and one of the questions that came up was, is it possible to post on somebody's wall if they do not have the application installed? Um, I, I would have to check on that. I think uh, I think you can post. I'm not sure about the wall. You can you can you can feed to give it to their news feed. Um, when, when you post to the news feed, let's go back to that. Yeah, I don't think an application can write to a, a user's wall. I don't, I don't, I'm not even sure I, that it can, yeah. It, I don't think that. <coughs> I, I'm not even sure I've seen it write to a wall at all. No, uh, no, because it, it the wall is reserved from user to user interaction. The wall is not reserved for applications at all. Um, I think that if you found a way, they would probably pass it real quick. Well, you could actually do it if you log in to the website, like have a command logged into the website, and then actually post to the forum on the screen. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's very you're, much against it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, then, yeah. and then your application gets banned and all. Yeah. 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 The news feeds are, um, are can, can go to people who, who don't have your app, who don't even necessarily. It's as long as they're friends with the person who's, who's actually it was. But they're but they're rated in rank. So what you need to do is get you want to do is get the best rating system. You need to get a better rating system by well, one not spamming or having them automatically go to a sign up page because they don't they don't like that. They want they want to do more about the but most importantly is um, you put you, you write it you write it in as a template. You submit the template, and, and you can have up to 10 templates for items. Uh, and then, with two or three people comment, two, two or three different users with the same comment, and it end up with the same news feed, but using this, or at least using the same template, they'll get pressed into one, they'll get three times the, rate, the rating, it's more likely to make the news feed, which means you're more likely to get to, uh, to get other people's eyes on our news feed. Uh, all sorts of tricks and that. I was thinking that um, you can kind of simulate the wall. I don't, I don't have a written Facebook app before, but I've seen enough of them on my own Facebook profile that uh, maybe you could. I don't know what kind of control you have over the notifications it sends you when cause I get all these notifications saying it's time for the start of the chat or whatever. If you can customize that text, maybe you can use the notifications page as uh, to kind of simulate the wall. Yeah, there, there's, uh, well, it wouldn't be right on the wall, but yeah, there, there, are, uh, there are some limitations in what you can do with notifications. Uh, some of them are random, and I'm still arguing with myself about whether or not I should put filters in to, to match theirs. Like, you can now not have the word message in the notification. So, do I filter out the word message when somebody submits some, well, I guess they, should, should the component filter out the word message? Should it turn an alarm or should it just submit it and let them deny it? I don't know. Um, Could you actually show us like the the output of maybe you know your helper, like you know, like a a render what the the XBML looks like with your yeah. JavaScript or anything or do you have that available? Thank you. 
One thing that's a little bit difficult with Facebook um, that if anyone can come up with a way to help out with is debugging. Um, because if you go to the if you go to the site, if you go to your directly to your server without going through Facebook, then it doesn't meet all the requirements necessary to be to, to pass as a once you have an FBML parser, you can't parse it yourself. Um, setting up a duplicate application. Uh, with a different key and a different and uh, a, a different secret works, but then you can't do a lot of the testing with friends because the friends don't have their second duplicate application installed. Um, one thing they do do is when you visit the site and you're on the developers list, like I am here, it renders it shows you in a source in a in a comment it shows you what the actual HTML that your view rendered is. Before the top of the actual page that it rendered. So only, the, only somebody on the developer list gets this. This would be um, the code I have actually Here's an example here of the, on the tabs. I had, I had to do. So if it's me, that's my ID, show these tabs. One, two, two tabs. And a comment. If not, show, yeah, then here's it else. Render the exact same set of tabs, but with like one different parameter. Um, that's, that's part of what I was saying earlier about the redundant code. Um, my uh, tab tools in the, in the helper will generate the two with you only having to put in. Um, it isn't all that much in the helper. I had a chat out to that. I think it might have been honestly mostly in the HTML and Ajax. Where do you see that? Sure. This is. Um, we have to write a mind for that. options, which is to do with like a traditional star, where you get four stars, you pick the third star, one, two, three, gets lit up, you pick the second, and then half stars. Too. Or um, the mode which this in is in, which is to just set active whichever one it is. Um, and it uses CSS. All it, all it does is change the class on um, the items, and then, and then you use CSS to be populated. Again, I, I'm not sure. 
sure that this is. Yeah, I did it. I did it before. I think I shouldn't have. So I broke the JavaScript. Um, and that's as, that's as simple as using it. The, the API for the autocomplete matches exactly the API for the for the autocomplete in the in the uh, Ajax helper, and the same for the for the editor, um, so that you don't have to relearn an API. Um, it needs all the same information, just it's like using prototype. It uses it uses the local script. And the Did you, uh, did you completely rewrite their API, or are you sending their uh, so their, their API, um, well, I, I completely rewrote their libs, their PHP libs. Um, the majority of their magic actually happens in the, in the API, and, and what, what happens to the request once it gets back to their server. Um, I found their libs to be pretty messy, um, and kind of confusing as to why they did it that way. They, there's two classes. Um, even if you recall one, and that, that one automatically makes sense, this is the second one, and it never makes more than one instance. It seems like it seems pretty good messy to me. And you know, there's also stuff you have to do, regardless of whether or not you you do anything else, that you still have to do manually. That could have been done in the instantiation. And then they have a bunch. Some of them are just wrappers of other ones with different names or with preloaded variables. Um, so when I realized that there's maybe two or three of them that I wanted to use, and then I didn't like the way that I had to use it, I just decided to use it to make it from scratch. So, so how do you plan on, because um, I, I mean, I know they, uh, they're they constantly rewriting that API and using um, like 16 years. They do. They, they, they change it pretty frequently. Uh, I, when I wrote the, a, the API for the component, um, well, the data source isn't going to be changing all that much other than adding tables that aren't really tables. Like that is a cookie table. I don't think that that should be handled through a data source query. There, there's already there's other ways to get to the cookie. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not bothering adding that stuff in. Um, when I built the component, I built, in, in, I built those API queries in a way that made more logical sense to me. And every change that, that's happened since then, except maybe one or two examples, hasn't required me to make an API change just to, just to change it. They usually get pretty fair warning. Um, so it's like they have to do And then the helper like I said, is generally what they know. What, generally what their changes are, are they change their requirements and, and what you're allowed to do and uh, what you can and can't get away with. Um, and I've seen them happen to the I have already had um, different ways to have different profile aspects um, in one can. It didn't make sense to me that they weren't free and they were to be free and it didn't change anything. So. Anyone else? I had some Eclipse uh, code that I can access. So. Like that really the example. There'll be plenty of examples. I'm on the uh, IRC channel pretty much all the time. <laughs> so, uh, it's true. <laughs> so, yeah, if anyone has any questions, Skateboard, <laughs> yeah. Um, it, right now, it's been, it's been just the SDN. <laughs> um, but I'm going to tag it with these. Like I said, I'm going to.